Okay, it's one o'clock. Uh, welcome to another HDF clinic. Uh, uh, hi, Robert, how are you? Uh, I will be taking a little bit of a break, but we have some great contributors lined up for you. So uh, I hope there will be minimal disruption. And okay, uh, I'm gonna pause here. I checked our uh, sign up sheet, our Google sheet earlier. There weren't any questions, uh, but I'm gonna pause and ask, are there any questions at this point? No questions, Garrett. Okay, thanks. Um, then I'll just press on here. Uh, highlights, um, announcements. Tomorrow we have a great webinar uh, from the authors of the uh, VS Code extension based on H5 Web. Um, that's gonna happen tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central Time. Yeah, I think last time we had a little bit of a mishap there with the timing. It's yeah, 9 a.m. Central Daylight Savings Time and the registration is still open. It's gonna be a Zoom meeting, I think. So you can just register, you'll get a link and then, uh, but I imagine there will also be a recording in case you have other uh, events on your calendar. Um, also keep in mind, we have uh, several positions posted uh, in the HDF forum. I link them here, software engineers uh, with different specializations, sort of the all round are the uh, little more cloud focus and HPC, uh, if that's of interest to any of you. Um, and uh, there is a new RFC out. Um, I linked it here. Uh, it's about uh, vol connector feature flags. And I'll, I'll load it in a moment. Uh, I can just say open a new tab and then we can switch there. Um, the, the uh, question that this RFC tries to answer, so we all know um, wall connectors, uh, what wall connectors do is basically, okay, they intercept HDF5 API calls, and th these are for terminals, so they are talking directly to storage. And then the question is, well, let's say you are the maintainer of an application, and then you might ask, well, how complete is the implementation of the HDF5 API of that connector. In other words, uh, does that connector really implement everything that I need in my application? So let's say, um, oh, uh, Quincy says he doesn't see the link in the application. Uh, 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 I just opened it here. Uh, oh, uh, let me just uh, send you guys the link uh, to these notes. And then uh, uh, Quincy, they are uh, in the notes here. Uh, so I, I also copy the link uh, uh, to the RSC directly. Um, right. So um, also, just, just to be clear, real quick about that RSC, that was written pretty quickly and without actually trying to implement any of it. So there's an, it would be a version two of that that comes out fairly quickly, right? There's like, it's missing the discussion of H5P get, um, H5P like FAPL get feature, get cap flags, which is probably how it's actually have to be used inside the mm -hmm. library. So so that's really, it's, it really needs a V2 before it's ready for prime time. Just so people right. also too, we're gonna have to, the, the flags that are documented in there are really just kind of a guess, right? There were, as we, go through and actually mark up the vol tests. Those will change for sure. <clears throat> yes, so Quincy, I think the answer to your question is wait to review, yes. So it's really a conversation starter, let's put it that way. And yeah, any concerns, any feedback that people might have to share uh, would be interesting, Yeah, especially from wall uh, developers and authors and um, yeah, so uh, just sort of finishing my earlier sentence uh, or my paragraph. Um, so yeah, the, the question, or, or you might ask, well, what's the purpose of these feature flags? And the purpose is really, yeah, you would like to know, um, is a given uh, wall connector suitable for my application in the sense that uh, in your application, let's say you are making certain a API calls such as creating files, creating data sets, and, and all the rest of it. And then, as we all know, uh, the ball connector may or may not implement all of the things that you are doing. 
And so in order for you to programmatically discover or interrogate uh, a given wall connector, yeah, you would retrieve uh, these feature flags and then uh, draw a conclusion for yourself uh, whether that's adequate for your purposes and so forth. So here I just opened up, this is the RSC in its current form and it just discusses a little bit sort of questions around granularity, basic flags. So for example, you want to know uh, does the, it's a terminal wall connector, so it talks to storage, but then you might ask, well, is it actually capable of producing native HDF5 files, meaning in the formatted in the HDF5 file format? Does it support asynchronous calls? Is it thread safe? And, and, and so forth. And then there's a little bit of a discussion here about the granularity of this. And then there are examples in here about these capabilities uh, that you may discover uh, through these feature flags. And it's, yeah, at this point, it's short and sweet. I think yeah, it's five pages and uh, it also needs a new logo. Uh, that's the old logo. Uh, but um, yeah, so a conversation starter, uh, just sort of a heads up for everybody who develops wall connector plugins um, that this is something that's coming. And, and uh, if you have needs, concerns, comments, then yeah, the forum is the place to discuss all that. And just for posterity, um, you know, especially since Quincy's here, you know, when we're trying to figure out what to do with this, there's the the big question was how how granular do we make the flags, right? Like for the, the biggest field you get to kind of not do something complicated is 64 bits, 64 flags. And so you can't clearly have a one-to-one -one API call to flag ratio. So you have to kind of figure out what you want to do in terms of uh, like how, how granular do you want these flags? And so, so we weren't really sure. So what we kind of did right now is to just kind of split things into kind of like basic things. Like, so for a data set, you should be able to open it and create it and close it and write to it and read to it. And then everything else we just kind of threw in the scissors drawer. And, and we pulled out certain things like for like new support, flush and refresh and things like that. Um, and other things that we knew from say, implementing the data connector were an issue. Like do you support things like do you, do you track creation order or not? And so, so we've tried to pull things out like, like that, but it's, it's unclear how much we have to split up the other, um, the other, the other API calls in terms of like, what do people think are normal things to implement? Um, so, so this is going to be kind of a, a work in progress for a while. We hope to have it kind of finalized before 114 comes out. So there's still time to, to change things, but we, we wanted to, at, at this time, at least not do something like have a struct that has multiple feature flags in it for like a, like a file flags, you know, bit set and a, a data set flags bit set. That gives you a lot more space, but then it's more, also more complicated. It breaks the bull struct more. Like right now we just had to change an unsigned to a UNT 64T. So that was, that's a pretty reasonable, easy change for people. But, um, but if we make it into a bigger struct, then we have to change the, the connector, the, the, the interface more, and people have to change their code more. And also, too, it's not just, you know, we we're also have to think about, like, the connector authors, and they have to go through and implement all this stuff, and software developers, and we want to keep it as simple as possible for them. Like, ideally, we want them to just basically build an or a bunch of flags together and not have to go through multiple iterations of comparing flags, that's just gonna make it complicated for, for other software or even for a connector author to have to go through and figure out which of like, say like, you know, if there's like 200 flags and you have to figure out which ones of those you implement, like that's, that's kind of a lot of work that's extra for a connector author. So, so this is kind of this, this tension between simplicity and completeness and use, usefulness. And we're still trying to figure out exactly where that point is. So any feedback on this is great and very helpful for us. So, mm -hmm. any uh, any other comments, questions on that? No. And like I said, this this will be updated in the future. Right now, we're basically trying to dog food it ourselves by going through and updating the Volt tests to to do this because that's the other thing. It's not just for software and and connectors to be able to match those, but it's also for us 
for, for when you're using the bull test suite, and eventually this will be incorporated into the main library, you can just use our test there, um, is for you to be able to go through and, uh, and, and say, like, as you're developing a connector, like, I don't support this right now, so that when you run the vol test, it'll just say skipped instead of throwing a bunch of errors at you because it didn't work. So it'll make the vol test suite a little more easy to use for somebody who's developing a vol connector and to kind of be able to do that iteratively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are we thinking, or we, we will be supporting that in the, in the test suite where before a test runs, the the test suite will actually test, well, does this wall connect or actually support that call because otherwise, yes. yeah. That's a, that's a deliverable okay. for the ECP project. So that'll okay. be, by the end of September, it'll do that. That may change in the future as we kind of figure this stuff out. I feel like the the release of HDF5 1.13.3 in October will be kind of like a, a beta-ish release of this feature. And then it may get further refinement for 1.14. But I want to have, this flag scheme set before mm -hmm. 114 set. We don't have to perturb the, the struct and the method of doing this after that. Mm -hmm. Great. And I just threw it up here. So, so yeah, this is sort of the latest addition in our, um, so in docs, hdfgroup.org, hdf5, and then of develop. Um, here, here is sort of the documentation. We looked at it in the past, but just as a reminder, uh, so there is an RFC um section here and then all the rcs going back to 2004 in this case uh, are collected here so if you're looking for any um uh sort of more in-depth coverage of some of these features and um they are here uh, okay great i was um, okay there go ahead. for a moment but i'll um i'll give this a review and then i've got some changes that should improve the performance and clean up general pieces of the vault thing, mm -hmm. all the framework components. So that may impact this as well. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll get a good turnaround on this. Even with a V2, it'd be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keep us in the loop. OK. Oh. And yeah. So uh, Dana, I'll uh, I'll let you continue. Uh, what's what's new in engineering? Uh, I, I just yeah I leave this as a standing thing here. What's new in but but you, you feel free to talk about anything else. So one thirteen three is sort of in the pipeline, and how how is that going? And um, I'm going pretty well. Uh, one thirteen three uh, multi data set will. We'll, Looks like it's definitely going to be in there. That's going really well. Testing's going well on that. Um, BFD Swimmer, yeah, probably not. I don't think we're going to have time to go through and address all the technical debt that is in that. So maybe 114, but that might also get kicked to uh, a 114 one release because we have to be realistic about. I mean, I don't want to do release. I don't like doing releases deep into December because that starts to impact a lot of holiday stuff in the U.S. And so, um, so that that becomes a problem. So mm -hmm. I, I just, I don't think there's gonna be enough time to go through there and address all that stuff. I'll, I'll give it the whole Harvard try maybe in like November and see what we can get done. But I, would, I wouldn't count on that. I think it's gonna be more into 2023. Because um, you know, Quincy had some ideas for um, how to improve that and ways to do it better. So I, I kind of want to explore that a little bit in the, the next year. Um, yeah, I think we need to set some forums for talking it through as a community to some degree. Right. Yeah. So, um, but but I'm not I'm not probably not going to worry too much about VFD Swimmer until in, in in lieu of worrying about like getting the ECP features finished up and now. So um, so yeah. So 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 there's that. Um, anything else that's really exciting? Uh, probably not too much. I mean. One of the things that we're doing with um, one of our support agreements is we're going through and um, coming up with kind of a get it, getting started with HDF5 guide. And so hopefully that'll be kind of done in September. Um, well, it has to be done in September, um, but hopefully earlier in September rather than later. And uh, so we'll get that out there and that'll have some basic tips about how to go through and work on the library and explain some of the HDF group isms um, that we have in there so that people can better understand the code. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, let's see. 
Um, and, and as a part of this, I've been going through and going through some of our our dustier corners and and documenting and, and reorging. And one of the things that is probably going to change a bunch in terms of like where code is located and kind of how it's organized is the config directory, because that's been kind of a scissors drawer for everything. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to I have some plans to go through and, and reorg that so that's a little easier for people to understand. But other than that, I think that's kind of it for right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah I, on the forum, there wasn't really much happening. There was a little bit of here and there, but nothing really that caught my oh. attention. So go ahead. We should talk about there. So there's some new CVEs that came out from Cisco. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll probably send a, an email out or address that or I'll have to figure out. But, but those are, I, I think those are duplications of older reported CVEs that they, the people find that there's problems with these it's this H5 to GIF tool that, or GIF to HDF H5 tool that was, I think the provenance of that is that a long time ago, somebody wrote this thing and we just kind of incorporated it into the library in the HL tools directory. And it had, it's it's not our code. It's It's got, it's poorly written. It has many bugs in it. Um, and it's got some, some exploits where if you feed it a bad file, it's gonna overwrite some buffers. And so the way that we address this is instead of going through and fixing that code, which I really want to rip out and just put into its own repository so that it ceases to bother me, is um, you can actually disable building it, right? So it, for mm -hmm. most people, if you're just deploying the library, this is not a problem for you. It's a small tool. So you would have to build this and you have to deploy that tool in order for somebody to exploit it. And so the way that you can make sure, if you don't want to have that be a problem, there's actually configure options now to not build the HDF5 high-level tools, which is really just that and I think the H5 test or the H5 watch test program. So um so yeah so so for that the those CVEs that just came out are, are probably not a big deal for most of our our users. And so we'll we'll try to we're we're working on something to make it so that's more transparent about which CVEs have been reported against the library and how we're responding to them and when these things were fixed and things like that. Yeah is the GIF tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that lets you convert. Right. We wrote that? I thought that was somebody else's code. <laughs> Give us the names. <laughs> oh, Pedro. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, we need to, uh, we'll, and it just, I can go in and fix it, but like it's not a well written tool. I don't think a lot of people use it, but um, for right now, you can disable building it. So, that's a, if yeah. you're really concerned about CVEs, just don't build that tool. Yeah, yeah, it's just a convenient way to convert a like an HDF5 data set that's decorated with a few attributes and conforms to our image standard uh, yeah. into a GIF uh, that, yeah, the GIF standard or GIF or GIF, I forgot what, how people pronounce it. Yeah, both people get in fights. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so eventually like we'll, you know, it, it'll either be split out into a separate repo or we'll we'll go through and we'll fix it. If it's our code, but maybe we'll go in and fix it. But it's just, I thought it had some stuff in it that indicated it came from elsewhere. Or though maybe it's, maybe we wrote the code and underneath there's like some weird library-ish stuff that was not written by us that we just imported. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there must be in a code or somewhere. And actually, uh, one of the questions on the forum, somebody was actually asking, well, how do I do this? How do I convert the data set into, into an image, a, a, a pixel data set, so to speak? And, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, OK, let's just uh, move on. Uh, I two trips, tips, tricks, and insights today, although they are more ruminations. Mm -hmm. Number one is, and this was prompted by um, my colleague Alexander Jelinek actually just sent me uh, a reference to this um, uh, standardization page, call it that. And so uh, that triggered sort of this question of uh, people sometimes ask, well, where is the official in double quotes HDF5 standard? And uh, uh, of course, there is, I'm not going to get into what the official is. Um, but uh, of course, what I just showed you, that documentation set, um, um, that certainly has some coverage. It inc also includes specifications and so forth, but it doesn't have um, something that's nice about this uh, uh, reference is it doesn't have, uh, for example, the documentation 
uh, of the data model and so forth. There are some older versions that you might pick up on Google somewhere that others are hosting, but we uh, have do not have uh, as bad as that sounds an updated version of this. So, but this is a um, sort of standards uh, page uh, hosted uh, by NASA by the Earth Data uh, uh, Group. And um, it, it's called HDF Data Model File Format and Library. It's uh, up to date as of HDF 1.6, uh, which goes back a little bit. Um, but yeah, it has uh, uh, several documents here, including this document um, that some of you may have seen. It's a PDF document. It was produced in 2007 at the time by Mike, Folk, and Elena. And it is actually, I mean, it's just 40 pages long, so that's good. And I would say it is well-written, well-presented. Could it use an update uh, in terms of the, you won't find anything here about cloud, about wall, uh, about maps and some of the things that came later. But I think otherwise, this is a pretty good description um, of the data model and applies to this day. And um, it's also, yeah, well formatted, well presented, uh, has uh, bits and pieces of these UML diagrams you may have seen elsewhere. Uh, but yeah, it's of course written, although not this, the data model is domain agnostic. So although this is hosted on, on an earth science site, there's nothing really in the data model that's specific to earth science or makes it particular suit, particularly suitable or unsuitable <laughs> for data science. But um, no, it's just a nice reference. And the reason this came up is we will update this document uh, because Alexander uh, uh, got contacted by someone at NASA asking, well, uh, would we like to update this? And yes, of course, uh, we would like to, and we will. But for the time being, I just thought um, this is a, a good reference um, if you have questions about the data model and want to want to see something that is pretty concise and sort of not in a way overgrown by too much technical detail and so forth, this is really a nice reference. And then here in the appendices, for example, I think there is a file format. You can also get that of our web page, but here's the file format specification as of um, October 2005. Uh, so that's a little out of date too, uh, but yeah, so you can also find that at docs.hdfgroup.org forward slash hdf5 develop under specifications. And then I forgot the other uh, link was about, oh, the API reference manual. And again, as of uh, 165, uh, October 2005. So again, a little date, uh, dated, but still in terms of the information that's provided there, uh, there's nothing wrong. There's, there are no statements in there that wouldn't apply today, but there is more uh, today. Um, that, that would be the only caveat. And okay, so if anybody ever asks you or should a question arise, where is the official standard? The truth is there are multiple places, but one good place uh, to go is this site. And hopefully we'll get a chance to update that pretty soon. Um, one other uh, thing is, okay, today I think is our 75th or 76th clinic. I can't believe it's that many. And I would like to, I think uh, many of you might be tired of seeing me here every week and I can, I can sympathize with that. So I would like to propose something just to add a little bit more. There is so much to HDF5. So First of all, HDF5 is a topic that is difficult to exhaust. So that's why it's hard to run out of material. But I would just like to highlight more facets um, of HDF or HDF5 in particular. So what I would propose is that we have sort of, okay, we have typically four of these per month that we kind of have a different theme every week and then also a different person uh, who will sort of be leading the discussion. And so the themes that I can see at the moment would be, well, first, 
um, around the ecosystem. And that would mean in particular HDF5 and Python, uh, but also other uh, ecosystems such as R, uh, Julia, and then other uh, formats and frameworks, like there's a lot of discussion around ZAR and N5 and, and all the rest of it. And uh, that is all good material um, where people might have questions. And um, I think uh, our, uh, one of the individuals that we have in house, my colleague, Alexander Jelinek, I think he's also a contributor to H5Pi, by the way, I think he would be a good, um, uh, a person to lead uh, these these monthly, they would be uh, discussions. And then, of course, uh, this uh, whoever organizes a particular session, they would be free if they know someone that uh, could uh, say something interesting about the new release or a new uh, event uh, in that uh, line of work, then they should feel free to invite them and uh, but again, I think it makes sense to leave it at half an hour to not turn it into a webinar type format. I think we have webinars and that's good. But but for these discussions, if people have a H5Pi specific question, I mean, I, I'm dangerous. I know a little bit about H5Pi and I'm sure I can ask, answer simple questions about H5Pi. But if you ask me about implementation details of H5Pi, I think I, I would be running out of rope uh, pretty quickly. Um, uh, the next area, HSDS, the highly scalable data service, and I think John Reedy would be uh, the, the best person to lead that, uh, where the emphasis would be a little more about, um, for example, there is this discussion in the forum going on right now where somebody tries to explore serverless uh, using HSDS uh, with Lambda functions on AWS in a serverless fashion. Um, um, that, that would be a great question for this. And since we would have the respective experts, I mean, if John would do this, he could quickly sort of, he had, has his little Kubernetes cluster running and so forth and could do some interactive troubleshooting, interactive demos and so forth. So I think that would definitely be an interesting um, uh, theme uh, for one of these uh, discussions. Another area, HPC, and I think they are uh, my colleague Scott Breitenfeld uh, would be uh, uh, a great uh, person to lead this, uh, where we uh, would focus more on questions around parallel I.O., that is MPI parallel I.O., file systems, in particular parallel file systems, but also DAOs. And then, yeah, we all know that uh, diagnosing and troubleshooting and debugging things in parallel uh, is, a, is a little more involved. And, uh, but Scott brings a tremendous experience uh, to all of this. So I think that would be another good theme. And then we've done that a little bit with the engineering corner. I, I would hope that yeah, Dana can lead uh, a, a session per month uh, where it's all about getting involved uh, in HDF5 development contributing to it, pull requests, issues, releases, testing, I didn't put that here, new features, anything um, that, that happens, so to speak, in the engine room. And uh, that would be a great way, I think, to maybe attract more people um, once they learn more how easy it is or it should be <laughs> to contribute uh, and what might be a good first issue and so forth. Um, I think that would be another great thread or theme um, in, in these discussions. We might have to adjust the weekday and time. So right now we have Tuesdays, one o'clock central. Um, any, I, I'd be interested in hearing any thoughts. Also, if you had, uh, um, if you were to propose a new weekday, a new time, any, any suggestions for that? No, I, I think, of course, it will be still a little more sort of North America or America focused uh, uh, time. We're not going to do it at 5 a.m. in the morning or something like that. But um, I think, yeah, uh, we, we might have to adjust it a little bit. And 
okay, that might be coming, but it might be maybe October um, at the earliest when, when we can start sort of rolling that out. And, uh, but yeah, I hope it will attract more people uh, over time and create more discussion in addition to what's happening on the forum. And uh, yeah, okay. Unless there are any other questions, we are out of time. Thanks for coming. And yeah, I'll see you at one of these next meetings. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.